dollar Okay, so you're not gonna believe what this problem was the whole time. Okay, check these views out. The Fiat Panda made it here. But that also means the twin turbo Gallardo is abandoned at Bilbao. That's as far as we got on the trip. If you didn't watch the last video, click in the top right corner and you'll sort of be up to date on what exactly has happened. So tomorrow morning we're going to be heading back from Barcelona in the Fiat Panda back to where the Lamborghini Gallardo is. We've then got to get the Gallardo from the garage and to the ferry port where hopefully we can get on the ferry back to the UK. The problem with the Gallardo is still a mystery. Now we could actually find out the problem pretty easily if we had the cable which connects to the Cybex ECU and then into a laptop. The problem is we don't have any of those so we're just trying to diagnose the problem old school way by just basically guessing. Now we've recently found out that towing a car in Spain is actually illegal so we're not going to be able to tow the Gallardo with the Fiat Panda but the main priority is to get the Gallardo on the ferry and once it's on the ferry then it's their issue to get us off on the other side. Now there's tons of issues what could be causing the Lamborghini to break down and eliminating the fact that it's the tracker because we called Vodafone and the weather in Spain because it's pretty much the same in the UK. We came to the conclusion that we think it's fuel related. Now with the car cutting out randomly and when it runs, it runs completely fine. The only thing I could think of was that the relay for the fuel pump was overheating, causing the power to be cut to the fuel pump, then causing the car to turn off. After leaving the car for a while, it then would start up normal because the relay had cooled down. So we went to the local Volkswagen dealership to pick up one of the relays. And with a new relay picked up, we still had to make the six and a half hour trip in the Fiat Panda from Barcelona to where the Lamborghini was stored. Okay, before we do anything, we're gonna get this out of the workshop. Will you start after six days? Come on, Lambo, please. Come on. Not looking good. Okay, we're up, we're started, we're running. The people at the garage got pretty annoyed at how loud the Lamborghini was, so before we could do anything, I wanted to remove it outside the garage, then get on to fitting that fuel relay. So all the relays are behind here. All this is all connected up. Obviously, this has got a lot of air in, but if we disconnect the tank, it shouldn't actually drop the um, ride height at all. This just stores the air for it to obviously go up and down. Now, I actually managed to remove the rear shelf out of the way without disconnecting any airlines, which was a bonus. I'm sure these here, one of these is a fuel pump relay but this leather is in the way and that's the issue. These relays look okay, but I'm just looking out to see if it's burnt out or it's getting too hot or something, just checking the pins, but I literally can't get to the ones that I need to get to. But after borrowing some tools from the workshop, I managed to remove the lever on the side just enough so I could get the fuel relay out. Don't know whether that's fixed it or not. I, I highly doubt it. We're just gonna have to go for it and then potentially, well, we're just gonna see how we go and see how far we can get. And it's gonna follow me in the Panda. Come on, Lambo, let's do it. Here we go then, 28 minutes, 33 kilometers. Lambo, you're gonna make it there, come on. Let's go. so far so good and it could have actually turned out to be the fuel relay so my confidence was building high but then this happened um, I'm jutting I'm jutting I've gone cutting out yeah I've gone I'm stopping at this garage and I've cut out Right, we're cut out, but we made it quite far. Okay, so we're down again. I can't think it being the relay, like the relays, well, we have switched them all over now. I think that would have eliminated something. If that wasn't working, then 
it, uh, it's, it's really hard to work out. So the only other thing that we can think it could be is that there's maybe there's creating a vacuum in the fuel in the um, in the fuel tank. So imagine this is your fuel tank, and then this is so this is where the injectors come out. Uh, this is where it feeds the engine. Now, if there's no breather in the top, and if that's blocked, then no more air can get in here. You see that the water's stopped dripping now. So then effectively if the breather is blocked then it's not going to feed the the engine with fuels the only fix that would fix that was for obviously driving without the fuel cap on so i'm going to try that now drive without the fuel cap on and then see if that works but you would have thought if i'd done the fuel cap you'd hear a massive hiss and i don't so it, we're just literally grasping at loose straws here it could be anything but it seems to like driving better when the whole car is cold so i started the car without the fuel cap and well it started up fine that was for yeah. about 10 seconds. Oh. It just doesn't make sense. You literally just can't, I don't, I don't understand what the fault could be. I mean, we've disconnected the battery, we've tried that, we've left that for 10 minutes, it starts, it runs, then it cuts out again. It just doesn't make sense how we left it for six days and then we managed to drive for like 13 kilometers before the issue happened again. Um, literally, we're, well, we're pretty much stuck at the minute, we're stuck. Now we were so close yet so far away from the ferry and we felt we had no other choice but to get back in the car and just go for it again. We've been sat here for a while letting it cool down. Even if we can just crawl a further bit by bit, we've made progress, but I just don't know how long it's, how far it's gonna let us go. Now at this point, I was completely helpless. No one could help me in this situation. Not even Squarespace. But Squarespace could help you. They do everything from websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace really is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. Now it may sound irrelevant and completely off topic right now, but it actually isn't. The main place I was going for for help was the internet. So if your business doesn't have a website, you're missing out on thousands of potential. Just check this out, look how easy it is to create a website using Squarespace just from scratch. There's loads of templates to choose from, I'm gonna choose this one. And once I've got my template, I can go in and edit anything. I can drag and drop my own logos in there, I can edit text, and I can even drag and drop my own photos in there as well. And there you go, a website for a business which recovers Lamborghinis in Europe. <laughs> so when you need a website, click the link in the description box below or go directly to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch your website, use code Matt Armstrong, and that's gonna give you 10% off your first website or domain name. Right, let me show you how I got to this point right here. And after getting even closer, in fact only 13 kilometers away, the inevitable happened again, but this time the car would not budge and we were on the side of the busiest motorway ever. And just to make matters worse, the police then turned up. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That would really yeah, it, it will work, but I don't know how long for it will drive. And then... You have uh, petrol, you have petrol. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got petrol. Um, yeah, I've got petrol. And the police then went on to say that they were not traffic police and they need to call the traffic police to help me but the traffic police will ask for a proof of ownership like a logbook and my insurance documents neither of which I had I didn't realize that you was meant to bring them abroad now if I didn't produce these the traffic police would tow the car away from me because I don't have proof of ownership so somehow I needed to get hold of these before the traffic police arrived I managed to make some quick phone calls, got someone to take a picture of it at home, and luckily I got photos of the documents just in time. The traffic officer was really helpful and actually called us a pickup truck to take us the rest of the trip. Nearly two hours at the side of the road now. Now the recovery guys took us as far as the ferry docks but we weren't allowed to check in because the ferry doesn't leave until the next morning. So we dropped the car off at the closest car park. Now we didn't feel confident leaving the Lamborghini in this random car park overnight so it looks like it's going to be a 24 hour challenge, a sleepover in, well I would say the Lamborghini but we've still got the Panda so it looks like we're going to be staying in the Panda tonight and then tomorrow morning hopefully it's got enough juice in this thing to get it onto the ferry. Once onto the ferry, RE Performance and Push Performance are going to be there to help us. Obviously the aftercare with those guys have been absolutely immaculate and I will probably put a lot of money on it that is nothing to do with the turbos or anything like that. It is going to be something 
Well, I, <laughs> again, it's a guessing game. But guys, it's going to be a long night. Welcome to the Fiat Panda Hotel. This is where we'll be spending the next, I think, 12 hours. Then we've got to drop the panda off back at the rental place, which is at the airport, get a taxi back here, and then hopefully we have some luck on our side that the Lamborghini will start up, get us back up the hill and onto the ferry. Once we're on the ferry, we're home sailing, literally, but I don't know. I, we're sleeping in a Fiat Panda now, so well, see you guys in the morning. Oh, it's gone. Okay, we made it the night in the Fiat Panda and we've just dropped it off back at the airport. Now we've got to start the Lamborghini and we just got to hope, pray that we can get this on the ferry. Now we really didn't have to go far. It was just to the top of the road and we got so close. Oh, the queue is horrendous. We got to the queue for the ferry. We could see the ferry inside. No. And no. it decided to die. Can you lift the nose up? Worse than ever before. Oh no. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What do you want me to do? <laughs> it angered me how close we were and some people beat to us and didn't even offer to help. Look, we could see the ferry, it was just in sight. I was so close to just losing it completely. Do you know what, there's been so many people drive past, uh, English people as well, and no one has offered to help. I know obviously it's not their problem, but do you know what, from now on, the next person that I see that I can help I'm going to go and help them because I'm, I know what it's like now. Now I actually tried to start the car so much that I actually killed the battery. And after a while someone did offer to help but unfortunately it's illegal to tow the car in Spain and they just would not let us tow it just to the ferry. So another recovery truck was called which pulled us onto the ferry another 160 euros later. And finally, we can have some time to relax before getting it off the other side. Okay, so here we go, we made it this far. Finally in Portsmouth. The car's right at the back of the ferry, we've got to get it off. I don't think it's going to start up, I think the battery is just completely flat. But uh, we've got James from Push Performance, shout out to James for coming to help us. He should be able to get on the ferry and then recover his back. And we can finally find the issue with the Guiardo. Do you know, if it does start up and drive off fine, I'm absolutely going to kick myself. Nah, it's dead. With the battery dead, James turned up with some jump leads. But still, we could not get the Lamborghini started. So with help from the ferry staff, we managed to push the Lamborghini up onto James's trailer. And finally, we can begin the journey back to RE Performance. Okay, touchdown in the UK, finally at RE Performance, where hopefully we're gonna get some sort of closure on this. Today's a Saturday, so Ricky at RE is obviously not here, but a massive shout out to James from Push Performance. Please go and follow him on Instagram. His uh, link is in the description box below. All we need now is the ethernet cable and a laptop to plug into the Cyvex ECU, and we can finally see what is actually wrong with this. But today we're going to leave this one here and we're going to be going home in a well a nice little courtesy car and then i'll keep you guys updated so we can finally get some closure to actually what has gone wrong with the lamborghini Guiardo. <laughs> okay so you're not going to believe what this problem was the whole 
time. And in fact, it's actually really <laughs> anticlimactic. So Ricky has texted me and he says he's just plugged in the car and the first fault he gets is the crank sensor, the crankshaft <laughs> position sensor. Now the job of this sensor quite obviously is to tell the rest of the engine where the position of the crank is so it knows when to inject the fuel and well when to ignite it. Now the funny thing is this has got absolutely nothing to do with the modifications that I've done to the car like the turbos and everything like that but the thing that didn't make sense for me is why would it all of a sudden fail when we've arrived in Spain. That's what I just couldn't get my head around. And really there's just one answer for that and that is just sheer bad luck. Something did not want us to go on that trip. That sensor could have failed at any point, at any time, and it decided to fail as soon as we got to Spain. Now to put it simply, there's no way we could have avoided this. There's no way we would have known that that sensor was gonna fail at that time. You just can't put a lifespan on these sort of sensors. And thinking about it now, it makes complete sense that it was the crankshaft sensor. The symptoms that I was getting, sometimes it would drive, sometimes it wouldn't drive, sometimes it would start, sometimes it didn't start. All symptoms of a bad crankshaft sensor. But again, it could have been all of the things that I spoke about in the video as well. We just, it is just simply a guessing game without having the plug for the Sarvex ECU. And the price for a crankshaft sensor on the Lamborghini Gallardo is something like £30. I'm kind of glad that it is something stupid and cheap though. But either way, the whole thing was an experience and we've got some good stories to tell and hopefully some good content for you guys as well. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.